So, I'm on my way to Kyrgyzstan today. I'm in Uzbekistan. I should be in Kazakhstan tonight. And then by tomorrow night, I should be in Kyrgyzstan, in Bishkek. Um, it's gonna be quite a journey. I started in Samarkand this morning at 3.50 a.m. Traveled by taxi, by train, by bus, by metro, by foot. We finally made it to Tashkent Station where I'm taking the overnight train. to Almaty. All my stuff that I have to lug around country to country. <laughs> Travel by bus again, by metro again, um, and then finally get to the bus station that's gonna get me on a bus to Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan to start my Kyrgyzstan adventure. So yeah, quite a journey. Yeah. The third and last country of my Central Asia trip. Um, so, yeah. so, after traveling for 40 hours, starting at 4 a.m. yesterday morning in Uzbekistan, I finally made it to Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan. It's been a long journey. I have not showered in like 30 hours. Lovely. So I've made it to Bishkek um, in the capital of Kyrgyzstan. I'm staying at a hostel, Tunduk hostel. Um, Tunduk is actually like the name of the top of a yurt, uh, which is uh, the symbol on the Kyrgyzstan flag. But yeah, so I am at the hostel for a night. Then I'm meeting up with someone from the hostel that's doing the same type of itinerary that I wanted to do in Kyrgyzstan. So we're doing a six day trip, first to Songkol, um, and then to Kelsu. Um, yeah, to get there, we gotta take a Marshutka, which are these like little buses that just go around the entire country. They pack them fuller than full and they just go everywhere and they're really cheap. So, yeah, it's gonna be quite an adventure. I'm quite keen. Um, yeah, and then I get back. I've only, I'm only here for like 10 days. Um, I then get back to Bishkek, spend another night in Tunduk and then go to Al Arja National Park, which is a national park just outside of Bishkek. And I'm gonna do some hiking and camping there and then I head home.
Bueno, la leche está en el dulce. No, esa no mucho. Parece que pide. Ha aparecido ahí, ha empezado a grabar.
that work for you? You go back home and then you just come doing like high seat? River freezes over about one meter deep in the winter. Not river, lake. Like, up about three three thousand meters high. Beautiful. One hundred times. Already. Yeah. Black Queen. Black Queen. Here he comes, here he comes with it. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so um, I got to Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan. Yes, two days ago. Um, spent the night in a really cool hostel in Bishkek. And then went um, to this little village about six hours away via the general public transport in Kyrgyzstan, which are these minibus Matruskas, that's what they're called. Um, they can't be edge anywhere, but they pack them completely full, like over, over overload them. Um, and yeah, like, yeah, it was not a comfortable journey. Um, yeah, we made it to this village where we then took, um, did a four hour horse track up to this yurt village where we stayed for the night. And then today we took the horses up um, for about four or five hours to a lot of galloping. It was so beautiful. Um, and we've come up to this about 3,400 meter above sea level plateau with this massive lake, a place called Sokko. Um, just beautiful horses. We're staying in here to get tonight. I'm surprised it's so comfy and so comfortable to sleep in. <laughs> so last night I had the best sleep ever.
this lake is sitting on top of the world, 3,000 meters above sea level. There's many local Kogus people that live in, still live in their yurts. Um, they'll live here in the summer, but in the, in the winter they'll go into the towns because it's just too cold. Um, but yeah, we've been eating the Kogus food, um, playing games with the locals, and honestly this is the most incredible place I've ever been, I think. It's just like nothing, it's just so, it's just like so beautiful. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Okay, so that's our ride to Kelsu. So we were in the town of Larin last night, um, kind of at the south of Kyrgyzstan. Now we're driving five hours to this yurt camp. We'll be basing ourselves for the next three days. Um, and we're gonna do a hike to this really remote lake that's really close to the Chinese border. So we had to get a permit. 
and like a separate permit to the government to be able to go there. But yeah, here we go. <laughs> No, I don't smoke. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I haven't been to...
So I've made it to Kelsu. So we, um, from Songkol yesterday, we took a taxi, which broke down, as you saw. Um, and then we went to this town called Kochkor, um, where we got a Mathruska, the, like it's this, the main public transport in Kyrgyzstan. It's like these like, minibuses that just go everywhere and anywhere. Um, and yeah, we got to the town of Narin, which is a really beautiful town in the mountains in this valley. And this morning we got like a car, like a 4x4, out about three, four hours out to this beautiful year camp in this valley. And then um, we hike up to the lake, Kalsu Lake, which is really beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm just about to go watch a game. Oh, I forgot what the game is called. I'll put it here. Um, but basically it's like the national Kyrgyz sport played on horses and they use like a dead goat as like a ball um, and they try and grab it from each other and tackle each other and it's quite hectic and they try and put it into the, the, like the opposite goal so I'll try and get a video of some of that um, but yeah it's been incredible like Songkol was incredible um, like there's mountains everywhere it's just nothing it's just so beautiful so remote um yeah i just want to spend forever yeah i've given myself way too little time in kyrgyzstan but i'm making the most of the time that i have so yeah it's incredible еще забросить все он убрал от них от всех он пускает играет играет ну да а мне или мне
Pretty intense. Um, you know, it's quite crazy. It gets quite violent for the goat, of course, for the dead goat, the headless, footless goat. But um, yeah, the whole, like all the families come out and watch, and the wives support their husbands. This place is absolutely incredible. Like, I don't know. My camera doesn't do justice. It tries, but. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cold though. My hands are quite numb. Um, we're quite high up here, like over 3,000 meters, I think. Um, and it's not supposed to be freezing. But yeah, the yurts, so um, the yurts we stayed in, in Sun Coal, um, are actually really comfortable. Um, got a little bit cold, but like a fire burns in them for like most of the night, but by the morning it's, it's pretty cold. Um, yeah, like the beds are comfortable. I've never had such good sleep. I don't know why. Maybe it's just was tired from like the horse tracking. But like I slept really, really well. Um, our year tonight is a little bit smaller and doesn't look as insulated. So we think it'll be a bit cold. But yeah, it's such an amazing experience. Um, they love to feed us though. Like literally, I've eaten so much food. And Koga's um, hospitality is literally just constantly overfeeding you. Like, my plate of food won't even be finished. And they'll be like, they'll grab it and be like, more, more. And I'll be like, yeah, just load it all up. Same with tea, like it's kind of bad manners to like not allow them to like refill your tea a hundred times. So I've been drinking a lot of tea. Um, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, that's our yard camp for the night. So Kyrgyzstan is quite, um, like most of the country's mountains, it's fairly, like, so there's like a few tarred roads between the main cities, but like most of the country is just out in the sticks, um, like dirt roads, um, mountainous terrain, it's incredible, um, it's just actually insane, um, it's how beautiful it is, and how just remote and untouched it is, we were saying like, um, Oh, yeah, I'm traveling with Bianca from Texas. She was at my hostel in the first time in Bishkek and we ended up having the same itinerary. So we just kind of joined the tours um, and went on the six day tour. Um, but yeah, we were saying like in like 20 years, Central Asia is gonna be like the next big thing because I don't know, but we've come before it gets too mainstream, which has been great. Um, yeah, it's still very local, still very untouched. Like most of the tourists that come here, proper backpackers i mean most people have come across the here for a couple of months um well seasoned travelers so yeah it's definitely not the place for just the, the normal tourists which is great it keeps it really authentic and just beautiful and untouched and incredible so yeah sun Coal lake is like behind there up there so we walked up there oh, there's horses everywhere in kyrgyzstan 
um, wherever you go, there's just horses, herds of horses. Um, yeah, you kind of, you learn how to ride a horse before you learn how to walk, yeah. Um, no, it's just honestly incredible, like, it's an amazing experience. So we're very close to the Chinese border, like literally I think about like 10 Ks. So we had to get, yeah, I said like, I had to get a special permit um, to come here, which cost, I think about 14 pounds or something, so 1,400 some. Um, yeah, most things are quite cheap here, quite affordable. Um, Yeah, well, everything's a bit frozen this morning. Um, there's like frost on the ground. It's a bit cold. And yeah, even though our oh, well, fire went until like maybe like 3, 4 a.m. Like yeah, the last two hours has been cold. It's just beautiful. Going after. That's so cool, like it's like half frozen. A little waterfall. I wanna get to that cave before the storm comes in. It's best. It's killer, yeah. Whoa! My chest is burning. And then head down the bridge. That's what I just climbed down. Those glaciers up there. Just beyond that is China. Fluffy clouds. Ah. That's what I'm saying. Oh boy, I'm racing the weather back to camp. Made it ish. <laughs> We had like quite a hectic thunderstorm for like an hour. This is that night yet. But then it all cleared. I came to see the stars again. I was, I was like, oh, if there was a thunderstorm, we wouldn't be able to see the stars again. The stars are absolutely incredible. Like, 
it's insane that I can be inside the yurt and there's like solar lights inside the yurt, so it's like lit up when we're having dinner. And then go outside and still, without even my eyes being adjusted, still vividly see the whole Milky Way, that band of the Milky Way. Like, your eyes adjust for like 20 minutes. I've never felt like the stars were so physical. Like, I don't know, it's insane. There's so many little marmots around. They're like these tiny little creatures. I can't really get close enough to get like a good photo of them. But they like screech <laughs> and like scream at each other the whole time and then run away and duck into the little holes um, when we come past. It's frosty, it's freezing, it's freezing. I'm gonna hike up that little mountain over there towards the sunrise. I think apparently it was minus eight yesterday morning but like this morning I think it's a lot colder um, there's a lot more frost on the ground it feels colder I see you.
पतंग में तो लग ही जाएगी Okay, so today I'm at Al Orsha, which is like a national park, just outside of Bishkek. Um, I'm gonna hike out to some guys here and camp tonight. I'm hoping it's not too cold tonight, because then I might have to come down and camp at a lower altitude. But apparently there's like a hiking hut that you can stay at, and I couldn't see online if you watch for free, so we'll see you when we get there. But um, yeah, I'm quite keen. tough going, it's quite steep, steep the whole day, but I'm used to it by now. <laughs> So I'm hiking up to the Aksai Glacier. Um, and yeah, yeah, to be honest, this whole Central Asia trip is maybe pretty fit because of <laughs> all the mountain climbing. Like you kind of forget that like, you're gonna go somewhere. The whole first day is gonna be uphill. And then the downhill is even worse. It's just tough, but it's good. It's worth it, it's always worth it. Um, yeah, Kyrgyzstan has been incredible. I can't believe um, how incredible this place is and how off the map it is. Like, no one really knows what's going on here. Um, the hostels are amazing, lots of great people. Um, I've met so many people from around the world, always chatting about all different countries. And like, it's amazing to travel and just see different people's perspectives. It kind of just it really opens your worldview, opens your mind. and. Yeah, it's such an educational experience. So it's been incredible. This is the hardest one I've ever done. I think I've done about 1,500 meters of elevation right now.
Play device. It's really cool, there's a lot of people like doing mountaineering and climbing and all sorts of things here. We're like 3,500 meters. I walked 1,500 meters up straight, or just half. But yeah, I met some great people here. Um, there's good food, coffee, hot chocolate. It's quite nice actually, a nice little, and there's even Wi Fi, like proper Wi Fi out in the middle here. Um, so, that's yeah, gonna be a good night. It's gonna be a bit cold, my tent, but. I'm prepared for that, so... It's raining. But I think the sun will come out a bit later, and then I'm going to walk up to the glacier. Or I'll just do it tomorrow. I can just spend the, the whole day tomorrow before going on to Bishkek. Yeah, Kyrgyzstan has been incredible. Like, nothing I ever expected, and nothing that you ever see advertised. Like, you just don't see anything about this place. But it's honestly one of the most beautiful, incredible places I've ever been. Yeah, so I'm at this camp tonight. Um, had some nice food. <laughs> Good reward for climbing 1,400 meters straight up. <laughs> but, yeah, it was raining. Um, so, I didn't hike to the place here yet, but I've got the whole day today. I mean, I've got the whole day tomorrow to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to be back. i got to do like Pakistan, Tajikistan, all the other stands. So, but yeah, i got to come back to Kyrgyzstan. There's just so much to do here. I mean, most people I come across are um, backpacking this place for months. Um, and they still don't even do everything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there's my green little tent. I'm hoping it doesn't get too cold. Um, the weather says it might get down to like two degrees. Which will be alright. A bit chilly, but I'll be fine. Um, child, this place is just <laughs> incredible. These very precariously placed toilets. I don't think I'll be using them. scale is just what gets me every time like just these towering mountains Glacial moraine, glacier, and tomorrow morning we'll walk over that way to where the other glacier is. <laughs> Once again, all alone up in the mountains. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm doing a bit of a morning hike. Gonna see how high I can make it up this one peak. But also gonna see it sunrise. And the 1,000 meter ascent begins. That was swimming insane. I'm already dead. At 150 meters. Got 850 meters to go. So I was touching the hills.
Ja, das kann ich hier so ganz anschauen. Noch eine Idee, das ist top. Haben wir 3800 Meter. So cool, that. So. I don't know. I don't know if it's the altitude or the fact that I did like a whole climb yesterday. But I'm destroyed. But slow and steady, slow and steady. <laughs> Stop running. Wow, well, look at the base here. So I've made it to about 4,300 meters. Got about 300 meters to go, but I don't think I'm gonna make it to be honest. Um, it's taken me about an hour to the last 300 meters. A wind has picked up. I'm kind of sheltered behind some rocks, but I'm freezing. Um, the weather's the weather. Yesterday the weather came in so quickly, like rain-wise. I don't want to take another hour and a half to get to the top, and then I have to walk down. In like the rain and the freezing cold. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this was a lot tougher than I was expecting. I don't think I'm used to the altitude and just the whole constant steepness. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna head down. Um, my legs are feeling very, very fatigued after yesterday's climb, after today. I've stumbled a few times and it's only getting more and more precarious and treacherous, the rocks as you go along. I don't wanna hurt myself. Um, <laughs> I hate giving up, but I don't think it's giving up. I've I've walked the highest I've ever been in my life, 4,300 meters elevation. <laughs> Proud of that. It's only up from here, I guess. But yeah, I don't think I'm experienced enough. Yeah, it's quite hectic, and yeah, it's very very cold. I'm up here, and there's ice, and there's snow, and yeah, I just don't want to. I don't want to mess around here. Um, I don't know how they'd rescue me if I got injured, so... Yep, I think we're down. Beautiful view, so beautiful day. Um, but yeah, it's been good. <laughs> you know, it's suddenly very, very, very cold. My hands are freezing. I have to get down. As much as I hate giving up, um, you don't mess around in the mountains. Like, I've done everything in the last few weeks and I've got to some good heights and good, good elevation. But it's normally with other people, it's normally better conditions. Um, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> it's beautiful here. I'm freezing now, my eyes are freezing. My hands are freezing, it must be definitely as low as zero. Um, yeah. I'm 
I'm like the only one here at this glacial lake. It's pretty cool. And you can hear it kind of like creaking and pieces breaking up. It's pretty scary. It's like frozen. One step. Well, I'm kind of scared to go close to it. Like, there's constantly rocks, like. Falling off the top <laughs> and like coming down below, what the heck? I just want to touch the base here. I've never touched the base here before. There's a lot of things coming down here. Let's see. Just touch the base here. That's interesting. It's ice. Oh, here comes the Very tired, I recognize. And I still have to walk all the way 1,400 meters down. <sighs> oh, this cake thing is so good. I'm exhausted. Fresh mountain water. <laughs> let's go, let's go. And now we head 1,400 meters down. Goodbye, beautiful place. Place here. <laughs> now what's great about this walk in this place is that it's very hard to get to it so like there's very few tourists um and so yeah some solid people out there like proper mountaineers climbers everything um, And I made it. Wow. Now I'm going to get a ride back to Bishkek. Probably going to have to hitchhike. Should be fine. So I'm back in Bishkek. Hitchhiked back from Ala Archer National Park. That was incredible. It was amazing. The walk down was tough. Like downhill was just as bad as I feel. But yeah, last night in Bishkek. And then I fly home tomorrow. It's been a night in Almaty. Um, but yeah, I'm at the end of my Central Asia trip, which is insane. So, last day in Central Asia. Can't believe it's all coming to an end. Um, I'm gonna walk around Bishkek a bit today. Then I fly out at seven, go to Almaty, and then spend the night there. And then I fly back to the UK tomorrow at about 11. So yeah. I can't believe like this month has gone by so quickly.
that's been an incredible experience. That's exceeded every one of my expectations. Um, yeah, it's just such a, a place that I never expected to have so much um, color, so much culture, so many opportunities. Um, yeah, I feel like I've lived a different life for the last month, away from the Western life that I'm used to. <coughs> but yeah, it's been good. And I've had so many incredible experiences, met great people, and yeah. Um, I will definitely be back. Um, I've got to do all the other stands, so I might pop into one of like one or two of these stands again um, in the future, maybe even in winter. I'll be keen to see how winter is here. Yeah? So yeah, it's been it's been amazing. It's been makes me feel very grateful for this opportunity and opportunities to travel and everything. Goodbye, Central Asia. You've been incredible. <laughs> and for breakfast to end off my Central Asia trip, the two things I've eaten the most here is packaged waffles and yogi soup. Pay attention to the following safety demonstration. Please fasten your seatbelt.